I feel like I look like a middle-aged man from Indiana with the chains and the and the shirt. What's up everybody? Uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Gabrielle. Today I wanted to do a new makeup releases video um, where I go on Instagram and I look at all of these different makeup accounts and talk about the new releases. That is what I'm doing. I am doing this and that is what I'm doing. If you're interested, then just grab a snack, grab a pet, preferably yours, and um, let's go. <laughs> okay, um, so e.l.f. is collaborating with Chipotle. When I first saw this, I started laughing, but I don't, I don't think it's terrible. I don't. I think it's practical is the reason why I don't think it's terrible because you have this eyeshadow palette and it looks like the fucking um thing where went with the food and stuff like, i don't know what it's called does and if you know what it's called because please i'm i'm struggling here it, it looks like that okay <laughs> then the sponges the sponges are cool okay because it's like a duo of the sponges and it looks like an avocado like <laughs> so then they have a plumping lip gloss which it's kind of clever honestly like spicy plumping lip gloss like okay I, I get it and they also have a uh, makeup bag that looks like a little takeout bag and you know it it's like it's fine it's not enough for me to buy it you know I I've never had Chipotle okay I've never had Chipotle and so I I don't feel like it even if I did have Chipotle I wouldn't feel like I necessarily needed this in my life but you know I can appreciate it like it's fine I've actually never tried Elf's eyeshadows I know their bite-sized palettes were a fucking hit but I just never tried them myself so tart I don't like shape tape concealer I feel like I used to um, but then I tried it out again maybe last year, like early last year. I was at Ulta and I was looking for a concealer and I couldn't really, I wanted to try the Juvia's Place one when I went, but they didn't have like a shade for me. Like I was like swatching all these shades. Obviously this was BC before COVID. And I was like, oh, I feel like there's kind of a jump here. I feel like there's not really anything for me, um, which is fine, you know? <laughs> but then the girl was like, oh, you know, like just do shape tape. And I was like, sure. <laughs> And so then I, I bought it because shape tape is expensive. Like, so I returned it. <laughs> it looks like chalk, and I feel like it's very, very obvious that I'm wearing concealer, just that I'm wearing makeup, and I feel like you could just see where it ends. And I just was like, I, it's not 2016 anymore. Like, let it go. So the point here is they came out with a different formula of shape tape. It's called the Ultra Creamy. And they came out with a Shape Tape Eye Cream. I'm assuming that they have the same shade range, which is 35 shades. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if I'm convinced enough. Maybe, maybe. But probably not, but maybe. I thought that the coverage of Shape Tape was fine. I just hated the finish. I hated it, so, you know. But I, I do think that this kind of shows that Tarte was listening to their customers because a lot of people were saying the same thing that I'm saying, that it's too dry. So they made a new formula, which is cool, you know. House Labs, a brow pencil. I didn't mean to make that noise. I appreciate the amount of shades. Is that the amount of shades? There's 13 shades, okay. Just wish Lady Gaga's brand was more exciting. I'm just repeating the gospel at this point because I know this is how most people feel about her brand. And sure, this brow pencil could be nice. The e.l.f. brow pencil is $2 and I love it, it's so good. How much is this? It's 20 bucks, but like... a brow pencil. <laughs> when is the last time that a brow pencil has ever like made it so big in the market and everybody was like you must get this now besides like ABH and that was years ago or like benefit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the display of Jaclyn Cosmetics is at Ulta. I don't care. I just don't care. Like she recently came out with um, blush and bronzer duos, and 
Samantha Ravindel tweeted that she got PR from a brand. She didn't say who, but she said, I got PR from a brand and these they sent me like four different bronzers and here they are all swatched out of my arm. And they all look the same. Even when the duos were announced, I wasn't really impressed because I thought that the shade range could have ran deeper. But seeing that four of the shades are literally exactly the fucking same is disappointing. And I I just don't support her brand. Like I I did make a clown purchase and I bought one of her powders. It's the luminous powder. Is that what it's called? Just luminous powder? Yeah, it's it's this. It's the uh, like bigger setting powder. It's fine. I don't know why I bought it. I think I just was like, I think it was just the parasocial relationship that she kind of created with like, I guess me and like all of her subscribers, which is why everyone was like kind of, not everybody, but it just, it's why like people, you know, kind of gave her a second chance because I feel like her subscribers felt like they knew her. I really just don't think that should have been redeemed so easily just because she posted a video when the whole lipstick thing happened. And then she later said that everything that she said in that video was a lie because the video she posted was explaining like, oh, this is what happened with the lipsticks. This is why they're fuzzy. Put up blurry fucking documents. And then she later went on to say that everything she said in that video was a lie. She never said what actually happened. In conclusion, I just think that I'm just convinced that she thinks her customers are stupid and you just cannot tell me otherwise. Like, I remember when this happened, I could not get off my phone i was like oh my god like where are the updates what is what is the tea like what's going on and no i feel like there wasn't a fair explanation of anything there was literally like fuzzy hairs and glass shards and shit and she was like only one percent of my customers had a problem that no it more than one person it's like she lied and she lied so out of her ass <laughs> she lied so out of her ass and i feel like she kind of relied on the parasocial relationship like look i this is just a guess here i don't know the woman but i just feel like she really relied on the parasocial relationship so that people could kind of just believe whatever she was saying trust her and stuff and i just it like you fucked up you fucked up and just admit to it and fix it like dude literally she deleted social media <laughs> Oh yeah, four bronzers look the same. The shade range could have been better. Blush and bronzer duos in general, I usually don't like because if I find a bronzer that, you know, fits me and my skin tone, chances are I'm not going to like the blush. And chances are the blush that I like probably has like a deeper bronzer or something. You're going to walk into Ulta, you're going to see her face, you know, just there. Oh my god, so... <laughs> Kat Von D used, was kicked out of her own makeup brand, right? We know this. And they named it... I'm sorry, I said we know this and it reminded me of fucking SNL. They renamed their brand to KVD Vegan Beauty, which stood for Kindness Vegan Discovery Daft Punk Human After All Beauty. Like, that's not a joke. It, it did stand for that. That is a joke. They changed the name again. They changed the name again to KVD Beauty, and it stands for, oh god, this is supposed to be Latin, so I don't know if I'm saying this right. Cara Veritas Decora. Decoras? Is this what? It translates to Value, Truth, Beauty. And they're saying that it's like a rebrand, and when you go to their Instagram, it's like completely wiped out of everything else, and it's just all this new stuff here's the thing it's the same brand and then kat von d herself kat von disease herself said i wish they would just get rid of my initials to an extent i understand why they won't get rid of the initials and i forget what the term is called like brand equity there are people that are like just regular consumers don't watch youtube don't follow these accounts don't care to and they just remember this brand as being Kat Von D. 
and they don't know that she was like you know removed from the brand they probably don't even know that she announced that she's an anti-vaxxer they just go to sephora like a regular person and they're just like oh cat bundy like i tried her eyeliner once and they just want to like keep those customers because if they look for it they're just gonna think that it's gone but it's actually not gone it's under a new name but at the same time i feel like there are tons of people that do know what happened and do know that she's no longer with the brand. I feel like if you were to explain to somebody why she was kicked off, it's not like they're gonna get upset. <laughs> Unless they're an anti-vaxxer, then they'll get upset, but like... New name. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Listen, I like their products. Their foundation that they um, announced, the uh, balm, looks very intriguing. It just looks pretty. These blushes are so good. Propa Beauty, who if you don't know, Propa Beauty is a black owned indie brand. They and they currently, they have lipsticks. That's like their thing. They're supposed to be deep nude shades for deeper skin tones because those are harder to find for people that have deeper skin. I'm actually wearing one. It's called Profits. Obviously, it's not a nude on me. It's deep these are so pretty they're very very comfortable as well and so they're releasing new shades they're releasing seven new shades mostly like reds just wanted to shout this out you know these are just new lipstick shades that they're adding and you should definitely check them out they're only like 12 dollars, and they are so they're easily worth more than 12 dollars. if you told me that these were high-end lipsticks i would definitely believe it i'm sorry if i feel like i'm jittery or just like finding it hard to speak i'm cold <laughs> Melt is doing a sneak peek of cream blushes. They're calling them cream blush lights. Excuse me. I am intrigued. I am intrigued. I don't need another cream blush. I, I'm trying to be like minimal about it because they can go bad kind of fast. I feel like I bought like way too many last summer, but I do love a cream blush. Is this the last thing I want to talk about? I think it is. All right. <laughs> I have to include many trigger warnings for this because i and i can't fucking believe i have to include many trigger warnings for a fucking eyeshadow palette but here we are so i don't know if where this palette is because i can't find it on the brand's website or their instagram page but i'm seeing pictures of it and i first saw it on twitter from Sharita Explains It All. That's her name here on YouTube. You should check her out. She posted this on Twitter and it's called The Survivor's Palette by Amy Lee Cosmetics. Um, what's wrong with this palette is the shade names. So here we go. Again, trigger warning. These are the shade names. It's a rainbow palette, but the names are very weird and insensitive. You, literally the pink is called breast cancer literally heart disease is red there's five pressed glitters which is kind of a choice including epilepsy here's the thing i am a person who has struggled with some of these shade names some of these things presented here in my own real life and i don't feel empowered looking at this. I wouldn't feel empowered using it. It's very, it's just really like, why? I don't even know how to describe this. It's just why. It just seems like you're profiting off of other people's struggles and I don't know. No, why, why is there shade in here called suicide? And there's like four types of cancers in here. Like one, two, three, four, four. And one of them is a press clip, Jesus Christ. This exists, I, I think, because people were asking me, like, is this real? And I'm like, girl, I it could be. <laughs> I, I can't find it on their sites or their Instagram. The brand exists. Amy Lee Cosmetics, they do exist. And they have similar palettes. Not like this fucking degrading, but similar layouts of these palettes, like with the white packaging and the 15 pans, but I, I don't know. This doesn't even seem like it was well intended, you know, calling it the Survivor's Palette. Like, this is way fucking worse than Cremated by Jeremiah Starfuck. This is way, way worse. Easily. And people were comparing this to a palette from Makeup Maniacs, and it was called the Butt Hurt Palette. Which I had never seen before, but oh my god. Literally, the blue shade is called Lives Matter. Like, blue lives matter. 
-mm. I feel like with the um, survivor's palette, they're trying to act like, um, this is to like empower people that, you know, like go through these things. But the but her palette is like, yeah, like we're so edgy, like today's generation so sensitive kind of thing. But these are both, um, the but her palette is older, but these are both like, makeup is weird. Makeup can be very, very weird. And <laughs> that's it. That's everything I wanted to talk about. Um, th these are my new makeup releases. They, they are not my new makeup releases, dear God. If you like this video, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That would be super cool. I feel like I've seen someone do this before. Like, give me a video a thumbs up and they go like <laughs> Anyways, if you want to see more of my videos and my content, then go ahead and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. You've been a lovely audience and I'll talk to you later.